Hello, and welcome to the Crypto Masters podcast, helping the general public to get an understanding of crypto assets. My name is Brian McCoy. My name is Ross Eaton. And we are the The Crypto Crypto Masters. You know, Brian, I've been editing all these podcasts lately and, you know, in my head, I'm waiting for the music to stop. I don't know why. (laughs) My brain is broken. (laughs) We, we sync much better when we're together, but, um, when we're on zoom, we just do the best we can. Well, let's get started on today's episode. Today, we're going to discuss a coin called Raven coin. And as a reminder, our goal is to provide information about crypto assets to help the general public to gain an understanding of what assets that they might want to invest in. We don't focus on short term trades, so we're not going to try to tell you about a coin that we think is going to moon within the next week. We try to talk about uh, different coins, but uh, for the most part, our strategy is uh, long term. So we're going to buy and hold and that's sort of uh, our, our focus here on this podcast. Yeah, and we're, you know, we're trying to cover a variety of different coins, um, really just kind of give an overview so you can go and do um, you know, your own research. Um, you know, we should really only be supplemental to your whole uh, research pro- you know, process. Um, but you know, this hopefully will allow you to make your own investment decisions. And um, Brian and I always give our final thoughts, um, but you know, we have to say it for our legal team. Uh, this show is, should not be considered as financial advice. Um, we're, we're not financial advisors, so it's not financial advice. No, no, not at all. So now that our legal team is satisfied, I got to go ahead. Um, Green light it. We can, uh, we can proceed get started and jump into Ravencoin. All right. Well, this is another interesting coin, and I think with a great name, you know, and a great logo with the Raven. <clears throat> so, Ross, uh, Get ready for a little thespianism. Oh. <laughs> take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Sounds like a good <laughs> song. <laughs> okay, now moving on. Ravencoin is a fork of the Bitcoin code. It's kind of a kind of a surprise, I think, maybe to a lot of people because it it doesn't really do the same thing as Bitcoin, or it doesn't try to do the same thing as Bitcoin, um, but differently. So unlike some of the other forks that we've talked about before on here, and we've discussed, I think, at least four, um, this one really accomplishes something completely different than you know Bitcoin and acting as a, a cryptocurrency. It focuses on asset transfer and security token compliance, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. It started out as a coin to solve some issues with asset transfer. It it, it is asset aware. And even though Bitcoin can be used for asset transfer and and actually Ethereum can be used for asset transfer, they both have some weaknesses and problems with that. So they're just not a good uh, a good means of doing it. And so that's why Ravencoin was created. Yep, and uh, Ravencoin uses uh, the proof of work um, algorithm and has no plans, at least from what I've seen, of changing to proof of stake. And the only reason I mention that, it seems like, you know, these newer projects kind of are shifting to proof of stake. But I don't know. I like that, you know, this one uh, aims to continue to allow, you know, little guys like us to keep mining it. Um, but really, that that's kind of what makes it a little different from Bitcoin is that it uses the X16R mining algorithm, which was specifically created for Ravencoin. Um, but again, it's intended to, uh, you know, kind of kill the mining pools, uh, kill the mining pools, um, kill the ASIC mining, you know, that's the super high dollar, high power uh, mining equipment. Um, And, you know, for people that love decentralized cryptocurrencies, I I think this is a huge plus plus for you. Um, And also just another difference is Ravencoin has a block reward time of one minute versus Bitcoin's 10 minutes. Um, 
And that's also why there's a larger total supply of Raven coins because, you know, they're just producing more each block. Um, and I saw Ross on the, um, on the mining front that, um, you know, the ASIC developers or chip makers actually found a way to, to be useful and advantageous in, in uh, mining um, Ravencoin and the Ravencoin did a, did a hard fork to, uh, to combat that. So th they basically countered the moves made by the ASIC people. So that again, it could go back to being mined by regular people without the big ASIC rigs or the pools. So I, I was impressed by that as well. Oh yeah. And you know, I'm, I, I think you and me and our kind of agreeance on this, not to get too deep into it, but um, you know, we're not really looking in to get in, you know, looking to get into mining. Um, but if, we were. This is definitely one of the coins that be on our uh, mining radar. We should we should look at it. Um, you know, I saw the hash power obviously went up from the early days. You know, when it started getting more popular. But uh, yeah, be worth looking into because I, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Raven coins. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. But there's more. Dark wings, dark oh. words. Whoa. Yeah, that's another one. That's a reference to. Uh, yeah. GOT? Yes, Game of Thrones. And in fact, so they were talking about ravens on that because if you watch the show or read the books, that's how they transported messages in Westeros. There's and I got a quote here from, and uh, that's the world of Game of Thrones. I got a quote here from something in my research. It might have been a Medium article or something like that. In the fictional world of Westeros, Ravens are used as messengers who carry statements of truth. Ravencoin is a use case specific blockchain designed to carry statements of truth about who owns what assets. So that's a very you know brief summary and, and reference to Game of Thrones that kind of tells you what um, Ravencoin is particularly strong at and, and what it sort of promotes itself as, and that is, hey, we're a great way to show sort of proof of ownership. All right, but let's talk about some basics that we always do, uh, some background about the Ravencoin. It was launched in on January 3rd of 2018, which was the exact date that Bitcoin was officially launched. This was nine years later in 2018. Uh, symbol and currency name is RVN. Um, it has a circulating supply of 6.88 billion, just under 7 billion. And as you mentioned, the total supply of 21 billion. So Bitcoin has the 21 million total supply. They did a times 1,000, I guess, to make it uh, 21 billion. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Too. So it is available on, on exchanges that uh, almost anyone can get to, including United States citizens. It's on Binance, but it is also on Binance US. Um, it's on Bittrex and Hotbit, um, which also US citizens can get on. And uh, it's on OKEX and it's on T0, which I'll discuss later. So the halving, the first halving, so it's, it's, it launched in 2018, there hasn't been a halving yet. First halving is in January of 2022. And the current mining reward is 5,000 um, RVN per block, and as you said, one block per minute. So one thing, Ross, that almost anyone that looks at this um, is, is happy about is this was done, this was launched the way that anyone would say a coin should be launched. No free mining, no ICO, no coins held for the developer, no founder awards. This was straight up legit. First miner, you know, gets the rewards, no, nothing uh, held back. So that's as good as it gets. Um, and, you know, it's a very community driven coin. I'm sure in your research as well, that kept coming up. Um, it's very, it's true open source. So, it, and we'll talk about who started it, but you know, the, the, People who started this were true crypto believers. And so they launched this coin in, in the true crypto believer way. Yeah, Brian, I, 
I really think this speaks to the team itself. I, I think it's just really cool to not do, um, you know, almost kind of try to get rich off crypto. The way I see it, it's kind of, you know, strange. You say, oh, I want this new protocol or new coin to be centralized, but then you do, uh, you know, kind of a pre-mine and kind of cash in yourself. But, and, and even speaking to the team more, um, you know, Ravencoin again is a, a fork of Bitcoin and the first couple lines of their white paper, they kind of um, give a salute and a nod to Bitcoin. You know, this is a great system. We really appreciate what they've done and we're, you know, we aim to move forward and do something a little different. So I think that it really just speaks to how awesome the team is and we'll get into who they are later. Um, well, let's talk about um, something you can do with Ravencoin. So uh, something that I think is really cool is kind of tokenizing real world assets um, and kind of to give you a textbook definition from Raven uh, Coins white paper. Um, assets are tokens that can be issued by users of the Raven protocol without the need to be mined. Users of the Raven Coin protocol create these assets and decide their purpose and rules independent of the protocol. Um, so, you know, on the surface, when you hear that, it kind of sounds like, oh, you just kind of create assets out of thin air on this Ravencoin protocol. Um, but there's a little bit more that goes into that. Um, and, you know, the first thing you need to do is you need 500 Ravencoin to do so um, to create your asset. Um, and these coins are essentially, you know, burnt to create and allow for this asset. Um, and the way I kind of think of this, it's kind of, you're kind of buying your space on the Ravencoin protocol itself to store this asset. Um, and it's actually really easy to do. You can, um, you know, don't want to get too into it, but you can download the, um, download the Ravencoin wallet um, directly from their website, which I'll link below. And um, you, I mean, you can just create your, you know, if you've got your Ravencoin, um, you know, 500 Ravencoin, you can go ahead and create your asset you know, you give it a name, um, quantity, um, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I really like that, that it's really cool and easy to use. Um, now the next question I can see asking is Ross, what are some use cases for an asset? You're confusing me. <laughs> hey, hey, calm down. I'm getting to it. All right. Yes. So, I was. Um, <laughs> so some examples from Wade and coins white paper, um, of stuff you can tokenize or, you know, again, we're talking about real world assets. So gold bars, silver coins, land deeds, um, you know, anything in the real world, which is really cool. Um, I kind of think of it as a, you know, kind of certificate of authenticity, if you will. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. Again, works of art, collectible baseball cards, in-game assets. I'm rambling here. So Brian, yeah. What no, that's think? good to give to give those examples because it's it's pretty cool and a, a related aspect of that is um, Ravencoin is has recently come out with a new version and you know now part of their focus also is on assisting in security tokens and compliance with security uh, securities laws and security tokens. So as you know, Ross, the ICO craze from a few years ago um, has fallen out of favor because frankly, they were, for the most part, they were securities and they were not compliant with US securities laws. And the SEC has brought many enforcement actions against ICOs um, as unregistered securities, against some celebrities, uh, Floyd Mayweather, um, Steven Seagal, both got cracked down for promoting um, <clears throat> ICOs or, or, or tokens without, without the disclosures that they're required to do under securities law. So now this is a real thing. I mean, this is an important thing that, um, that it's important to comply with. And um, I, I think um, it, it's, it, it's an a new area of uh, of use for Ravencoin. So you, you not only have their um, taking real world assets and tokenizing them, which make, can make it, you know, you see this, I've seen this in, in other areas in, in securities tokens, where you'll have a big real estate 
project. Let's say it's a, a large um, a condo development, let's say at Miami Beach, and you're going to sell each of those units, you can tokenize that whole thing, or you can tokenize it, even break it down into fewer um, segments than the um, than each unit, because each unit at Miami Beach might be a million dollars, right? But somebody could get ownership in that for a lot less because you could tokenize it. So now if it's a hundred unit thing, hundred unit uh, building, your minimum um, segment is no, is no longer a hundred. You can tokenize it and you can make a million. You can break it into a million different tokens and sell it out to people who couldn't afford to pay for the one unit, but they can afford a, a percentage of one unit. And that's what these tokens would represent. So that's just another example of what, of what you're giving uh, on how this tokenizing the real, real world assets can work, but it always ha has or should be considered, does it have an aspect of securities to it? And we're not gonna get into that, what's a security, but it's a broad definition. And in a lot of cases, um, it will apply. And so that's when the security tokens that are compliant with securities laws will be important. So that's just another um, aspect of, of Ravencoin that I think could have some, some legs to it. Yeah, and I think this is, uh, you know, when I kind of talk to newbies with, uh, you know, in regards to crypto, they, they're always talking about government regulations and this and that. Um, and it, it, I think it's a, a huge plus the Raven coin that it's, it's, it's being compliant and it's, it's built to do so. So um, and to assist others. So like if you wanted to use their, uh, their, their platform to make the token that we talked about, um, you know, it also then gives you the tools to, to help you be compliant with securities laws. So it's, yeah. Oh, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, all right, what about the team? So yeah, coming back to the um, the team behind this thing. So um, we've got uh, Bruce Fenton. Um, hopefully I'm saying that last name correctly. Uh, the CEO of Chainstone um, Labs uh, and Atlantic uh, Financial. And he's host of the Satoshi Roundtable, which hopefully I get invited to one day, probably. <laughs> He's a Bitcoin guy. He, he's on like the Bitcoin organization or something, right? Oh, yes. So um, he is uh, executive director of the Bitcoin Foundation and a founding member of the Bitcoin Association. There and, it is. Uh, All right. Coming back to that, um, you know, he's the host of the Satoshi Roundtable. It's an executive you know, or a, sorry, an exclusive invite only retreat for leaders in the blockchain industry. So I'm. Our, I'm sure our invite's in the mail. I it, mean, it's, uh, it's on the way, of course, right? They have to know about us. <laughs> but um, there's also Tron Black. Great name for crypto. That um, is an awesome name. That is a sweet name for crypto. Um, it almost sounds like kind of a, uh, you know, like a hacker alias or something. Or wasn't he in, wasn't he in um, the Harry Potter books or something? <laughs> I'm oh, wow. <laughs> that took me a second. <laughs> oh, full swings with the dad jokes, Brian. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a great, great name for crypto. He's a crypto developer, entrepreneur, um, one of the founding members of T Zero, um, another member on the team of uh, Ravencoin is Patrick Byrne. But, Brian, I'll let you kind of take over with more of T Zero Tron Black. And uh, these guys here. Well, I I don't have much to add about uh, Tron Black. I understand he's a very good you know developer. He he publishes lots of uh, lots of the articles you'll do on your own research. You'll see were written by Tron Black. Um, Ross is throwing this over to me because of the Overstock.com connection, which is a bit of a sore spot between us. But you yeah. always. <laughs> You always seem to bring it up. Well, I don't know. I, maybe I bring it up too. But I bring anyways, um, I, I will give the quick background story here because it kind of comes full circle. But when I was, uh, a few years ago, before I got into crypto, I was more of a blockchain guy. You, I don't know if you remember this, Ross, but there was a whole group 
you know, a few years after Bitcoin started where there was a little mantra, blockchain, not Bitcoin. And I sort of fell into that at first. Not, not really necessarily, but I, I was very enthusiastic about blockchain. And so most of my investable money was in my, my IRA, you know, it was a 401k rollover into an IRA. So that's, which is the case with a lot of people, right? And in your IRA, you, you can't, I don't want to say you can't own crypto. I don't really think you can, but there may be some ways, but I wasn't going to do that. But what I was looking for were, okay, how can I get some stocks that I can buy um, on an exchange, on a stock exchange that I can hold in my, uh, my, my uh, IRA? And so ultimately that led me to overstock.com. So Overstock.com, as everybody probably knows, is an online retailer, um, but that's not why I bought it. I bought it because it also has a segment, and when it was run by Patrick Byrne, who you mentioned, as he was the CEO, um, and he was a very big believer in, in blockchain and Bitcoin, and you know that's shown in, in Ravencoin. Um, but he was the CEO, and he started a... Uh, what I call kind of a, a, a well, it was, I guess a, a subsidiary of uh, Overstock, but it was almost like a venture capital fund that invests in blockchain projects. So I, this is great. Um, so I bought Overstock.com, you know, for that reason. And it also has a, a subsidiary called uh, Medici Ventures, and that's really what invests in these other blockchains, mm. uh, blockchain companies. And they're not all. Um, crypto and some of them are even private blockchain companies, you know, votes. Um, and I don't know, I'm not saying that's private. I, I don't know. But anyway, it owns a lot of different and, and can have different percentages. And some of them, it's a majority owner and some of them, it owns 10%. Some of them owns 5%. But anyway, it was almost like a way to invest in a uh, blockchain venture capital fund. So that's why I got into it. It also has T0, which is, um, a securities, it's an online securities exchange. It may not officially be called that, but essentially that's what it is. And it recently um, had a lot of action by issuing the first ever digital dividend, which was Overstock's preferred share, which I got as an, as an owner in, of uh, Overstock Common Shares. I got this digital dividend, which was extremely cool. Um, and now it's trading separately on the T0, has its own value. It's gone through the roof. So now we're getting back to why it's a sore spot between us, because back when, <laughs> when I was buying it at $10 and then it went down to $7 and then Patrick Byrne um, had his incident where he talked about something with the deep state and he ended up leaving and it went down to five dollars, and I'm like, "This is crazy, Ross. You got to buy this. I don't know why it's this low. It shouldn't be this low." And so I've, I'm buying more, and I'm telling you to buy it, and I think you end up not buying it. So fast forward, it closed Friday, I think, at 120 dollars. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Anyways, that's why. Uh, so, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> so that's why you are gnashing your teeth on that one. Um, but anyway, that's well, the, you know, quick note. I always have to remind myself, would I have bought in at five and sold at 120? Probably not. But the hindsight Ross is like, oh, I would have sold right at the peak and made, You're right. you know, so. Right. right. No, I, believe me, I've been selling all the way up. So, um, that's fine. Hey, and one other thing I wanted to show because, um, you know, a lot, I know a lot of our, our listeners are new to crypto and they want to know, and, and we haven't really got in a deep dive on, on how to buy it. Um, I think you can figure it out on your own, at least how to buy the majors. You can go on Coinbase. Anyone can go on Coinbase mm -hmm. and go on eToro and I think even Kraken. And it's just really pretty easy. The problem with those is one is the fees and the other is um, they don't have all the assets that you might want to buy. And, Ray, and, and we mentioned Ravencoin is on uh, Binance US, which also is fairly easy to get on. But a way that I found, because you know I do anything associated with my, my stock overstock, 
Um, and I downloaded the T0 app. You might be able to see it there. It's just a really easy download from the app store, T0. So I'm gonna press on the T0 just to show you this real quick. So it pops up and there are the three coins that you can buy as easy as anything. And the three are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ravencoin. And obviously Ravencoin because there's some, you know, somewhat of an affiliation there. So this is where I bought my Ravencoin. Uh, and you can see on there how much I have. Uh, it's, right now it's valued at 3,000. Now I don't buy my Bitcoin and Ethereum on here because I bought them on other places and I store them there. But um, this was easy for Ravencoin. So that's where I'm buying. I can only buy like $500 at a time. And I think it's a flat $5 fee. So I'm paying 1%. That's not bad. Anyway, that's just a quick way. If you're interested in Ravencoin, you can download, download the T0 app. And it, it's very easy. All right. So I, I think that is probably enough on the, <laughs> on the Overstock. The Overstock connection to, uh, to Ravencoin um, is, is very interesting. And we may see some Ravencoin projects you know, launching on the T0 exchange. Um, we'll see. It seems like a natural natural fit all right do you have anything to add to my uh <laughs> my my overstock and t0 discussion no no just i mean just tears man i'm just i i think during the uh you know covid19 i i really thought i i was in kind of crisis mode i did make some pretty big moves but not great moves i i would say like i, I mean i thought overstock was going under i was like oh man it's is T zero enough to hold it up? You know, all this stuff. And well, it went down to $2 and 50 cents in March. Yeah. And in August, <laughs> it's at $120. I mean, that's crypto like, you know, you don't see that in the stock market very often. No, absolutely. I mean, that, that is, that's like one of these DeFi things that just went crazy almost. Uh, I, I remember stopped like it was, I took it off my watch list. I mainly just do Robin Hood for stocks. I'm not as much in the stocks as you, Brian, but I took it off my watch list once it hit 45. I was like, I'm, I'm done watching this skyrocket up. And then Brian just randomly, when we, you know, get up together, Hey Ross, it's at 60. Ross, lady, like, Brian, stop telling me this. I can't well, I was it. trying to get you in it. I, I thought you were in it at one point, you know, I thought, Oh, you know, I've told him so much, surely he bought some. And so I kept updating you on how it's going up. And then, I started got the, 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 I got the hint that I didn't buy it. Stop telling me about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ross. Let's. Um, we we always try to uh, talk about anything negative. We you know any negative news. You know we've had other coins where founders have left and things like that. So we got one here to talk about with Raven Coin. Um, recently, there was a hack in um, in July of 2020. And the result was the hackers were able to create an extra 1.5% in the maximum supply. And the hackers were able to obtain that. And so it resulted in about $5 million to them. Now, you know, unlike some hacks where an individual just loses that money, this was a hack to the uh, kind of to the treasury, I guess. Um, so no, you know, individuals out, just everybody that owns some was diluted a little bit, I suppose. Although they're talking about correcting it. Um, one, one way they talked about doing that is you could move up the date of the halving, start the halving earlier, and then the, you know, extra uh, supply that they created would be then, um, you know, taken away. But then again, there's purists that say, no, we shouldn't do that. So I don't know if it's been decided at this time. To my knowledge, I don't know that it has. But, you know, is uh, something to be concerned about? They, they say they fixed the bug. And, of course, hopefully they have. Yeah, I, I, haven't, hit, I haven't seen anything definitive yet. Um, yeah, I haven't either. Option for sure. Um, All right. What do you think? Time for final thoughts? Yeah, I guess the last thing on the hack, um, I don't know. Is it kind of punny in a way that, you know, a securities token has an issue with well <laughs> i don't know that's my terrible joke of the night yeah. Um, but yeah i i was i guess of course now i'm a little worried about security with raven token um but in, in any early adoption you know adoption of a protocol a project in the crypto space there are vulnerabilities yet and kinks you have to work out unfortunately that happened but 
if you take that out of the equation, I, I, uh, I really love Ravencoin. I love the development team. Um, I mean, just go read their white paper. It was, it was a fun read. It had those quotes Brian was saying. I mean, they're in the white paper. They're Game of Thrones yeah. quotes all throughout. Um, it, it's really – I love the team behind it. I love the concept. And uh, the fact that it's trying – you know, it's, it's built to be compliant with the, you know, SEC recu- regulations. Um, I think this is a real win. And from what I've seen, too um, – I'll, I'll give ode to a uh, you know YouTube channel Voscoin. Um, he kind of pointed out that Ravencoin's a one of the more profitable um, you know uh, coins to mine right now, along with Ethereum. So I don't know this one. A- after you know we did our deep dive, you know somewhat of a deep dive and research. That this one's got my attention. I'll be you know kind of putting well, some let's, towards it. Let's look into the mining. I mean, I'm seriously. I guess let me go to my final thoughts, but let's seriously uh, look into the mining and, you know, encourage others out there too, if you like it, I think it'd be a good way to, to get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So Ross, let me tell you this. So I reading the um, procedures that you went through on how to tokenize something. Um, I think that's cool. And I challenge you to join me in tokenizing an asset using Ravencoin. Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe an NFT, which is a non-fungible token. If I say NFT, that basically means it's one of these, like a collectible that's a one of a kind. So like, you know, not this, this is, this is, a, this is fungible because <laughs> you can buy these on Amazon, but they are cool. Okay. So an NFT is something that is, is unique and we'll just, we'll think about, it. we'll look at our options and I, I'd like to tokenize something, just make it cool. And um, just while I'm, while I'm showing things. All right. So <laughs> like it, <laughs> my concern, I'm going to start with my concerns with Ravencoin. One, it's early in the inflation cycle and there's still a lot of RVN that's being minted every day. So like we said, it's just about 7 billion circulating 21 billion total. So if you look at, if you think about, um, you compare it to uh, Bitcoin, we're sort of where Bitcoin was in 2011, 2012. They're minting a lot more of it. So there's a little bit, there's some inflation there. Um, and it's kind of hard for the price to keep, keep up with that. So that, that's a concern, but obviously that's going away and it goes away exponentially, you know, like with Bitcoin, right? It still has hundred and some years where they'll still be mining it, but we're already at, uh, you know, 80 some percent. I mean, it's a, anyway, so that, that's a concern now is that we're still early in that inflation cycle. So there's, I, I guess there's just not a rush to get into it. Um, but you know, it gives you time to accumulate. So that's one. The other concern, or another concern that's not as important is, is competition. There are some other competitors sort of, at least to my knowledge in the different facets of it, there's the NFT and I'm, you know, it's a tokenization. I'm saying NFT because that's one of the big uses is the collectibles, but it's not limited to that, but there are competitors in that, in that. Um, use case. And then there are competitors in the security tokens uh, use case and and assisting security tokens use use case. One of them that's on our radar to talk about um, is Polymath. But I don't know if I've seen any combine the two like like um, like Ravencoin has. So one one other brief mention is I'm more of I've said this before I'm more of a fan of proof of stake than proof of work. for you know, a couple reasons. One is the energy consumption, um, and the other is uh, I just like staking. You know, you, you can basically kind of earn interest by staking, and, and and it creates some more scarcity by having it staked and tied up. But in any event, um, you know, it it uses the Bitcoin system because it forked from Bitcoin, so it's a good secure system. Anyway, all right. So now let's get to the positives. This coin focuses on two segments of the crypto world that literally could be the next big breakout segments. All right. So right now it's DeFi. There's no question about it. 
Oh, for um, sure. But when we have a crypto spring instead of a DeFi spring, <laughs> I think these two segments are gonna uh, are gonna be huge. One is uh, the NFTs. I think NFTs are going to be big. So the non-fungible tokens, maybe we'll do a show on that because I don't want to get into it too much now. But a quick way to think of it is sort of unique collectibles. And one, one qu very quick example is we've talked about CryptoKitties before. CryptoKitties was, was a big dApp on Ethereum that, that got so popular that it really brought, D it brought Ethereum um, you know, almost to a halt. One of the, uh, so it, it had it, this little characters, they were little, these little cats, obviously, crypto kitties. <laughs> One of them, it was unique, named Dragon, actually sold for some, tens of thousands or maybe even $100,000. But anyway, that's an example of an, of an NFT. I think that's going to be a big segment. And then, like I said, when crypto spring happens and crypto really goes crazy, they're going to be um, more assets being issued everybody's going to want to be in compliance and security tokens are going to be a thing going to be a big thing so the fact that ravencoin plays in both these markets i think is um is very promising for it i am positive on it i am going to continue doing my uh, <laughs> my you know uh, what i'm doing is just buying a little bit of time um, and I'm just going to keep doing that. That's a good way to do it because I don't think there's a rush. I don't think it's going to moon in the next couple months. So it's a good time just to accumulate. We've talked about this with some other coins as well. Yeah. Um, so that's what I see. And that's what I plan to do with Ravencoin. Very cool. I like it. Yeah. All right, Ross, you want to wrap up, uh, wrap up this episode? Yes. Well, yes. So, uh, all right. This has been another uh, podcast of the Crypto Masters. Uh, check us out again next week when we go, you know, release another podcast where we discuss another crypto asset. We'll have another crypto asset and give you something to think about. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.